Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Thomas Lutheran Church. If you're listening on the radio or online, we are happy to have you with us. A couple of announcements. Catechism classes begin this Saturday. These classes will be at the Parsonage in Manaway at 1 o'clock. My wife will be there, as well as Nicole and Gabe, our catechumens. If you would like to join us, please feel free to do so. The Catechism is a great overview of what is essential to the Christian faith. 
We learn about the will that God has for our lives in the Ten Commandments. We also learn about who God is and what he has done for us in the Apostles' Creed. And then, in the Lord's Prayer, we learn how we can address God confidently as our Father on account of Christ Jesus, his only begotten Son. So if you would like a refresher, feel free to come. Luther says that you can never grow beyond the catechism. It's a lifelong journey. Why? Because we can never master the Christian faith in this life. So we're also looking for volunteers to head up our stewardship committee. We're going to create a vision and a plan for our future. So if you'd like to be part of our stewardship committee, please volunteer. And then we are also planning a spaghetti dinner for Saturday, November 18th at 6 o'clock p.m. Those are the announcements I have. Are there any others? Lynn? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. If there are no other announcements, let's begin with our opening hymn, Please Rise.
We remember our baptisms in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you exalted your Son to the place of all honor and authority. Enlighten our minds by your Holy Spirit, that confessing Jesus as Lord, we may be led into all truth. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the reading of God's word. Our first reading is from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? 
The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, declares the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. The soul who sins shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is not just. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? When a righteous person turns away from his righteousness and does injustice, he shall die for it. For the injustice that he has done, he shall die. Again, when a wicked person turns away from the wickedness he has committed and does what is just and right, he shall save his life. Because he considered and turned away from all the transgressions that he had committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is not just. O house of Israel, are my ways not just? Is it not your ways that are not just? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, declares the Lord God. Repent and turn from all your transgressions, lest iniquity be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, declares the Lord God. So turn and live. This is the word of the Lord. We continue by reading Psalm 25 responsively. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies fall over me. Indeed, none who wait for you shall be put to shame. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right. And teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. For those who use his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning. It is now and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle lesson is from St. Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. 
Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, so now, not only as in my presence, but much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be, may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that in the day of Christ I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Even if I am to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you should also be glad and rejoice with me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. And when Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching, and said, By what authority are you doing these things, and who gave you this authority? Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question, and if you tell me the answer, then I also will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say, from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say, from man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Be of one mind, having the same love, united as one in spirit and purpose, pure and blameless in a twisted and perverse generation, lights in the universe holding steadfast to the word of life. This is what St. Paul tells you to do as a Christian. And when St. Paul tells you to do something, he's merely telling you to be who you already are in Christ Jesus. For as St. Paul says, God is the one working in you to will and to do according to his good pleasure. And elsewhere, St. Paul writes, God has made you his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do the good works he has prepared for you ahead of time. But dear Christian, how has God made you this masterpiece, this workmanship, who is able to do his will and follow him. 
Well, St. Paul tells us this is the mind that we have been given in Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus, who was in the form of God, the very God who appeared to the prophets of old, the God whom Abraham fell down and worshipped. That's what Jesus says. Jesus says he was that God. Abraham saw my day and was glad. And the God whom Isaiah saw in the temple, high and lifted up, the King of Israel, the Lord of hosts. And Jesus says about that, Isaiah saw my glory. This is Jesus. He is the Son of God who exists in the majesty of the Father, equal to the Father in power and dignity and authority. But when he appeared to us at first, he did not appear in all of his majesty. Don't get me wrong. He still had that authority. He still had all of those powers. But it was not visible to us. Instead, it was hidden. When Jesus Christ took on your flesh, he was just like any other baby who was born. He cried. He messed himself. And he required his mother and his father to care for him and to feed him. And when he was a young boy, he could scare the living daylights out of Mary and his adopted father, Joseph, by getting separated from them in Jerusalem. Even though unlike most children, he wasn't doing it out of sinful rebellion. He was doing it in obedience to his father's will. Because it was his father's will that Jesus should be in his heavenly father's house. And when Jesus Christ came to Galilee preaching and teaching, what did he look like? He looked like some ordinary man. He didn't even have the right credentials to be teaching the law. That's why the high priests and the elders come up to him and ask him, by what authority do you do these things? By what authority do you teach on the law? By what authority do you forgive sins? And so, Jesus doesn't give them an answer, but we know the answer. That's an authority he possesses as the Son of God. It's an authority that comes from heaven. But no one saw that. They saw an ordinary person like you or me. And on top of it all, what did this Jesus do? He was regarded as being the lowest of all human beings. He was regarded as a slave. For he suffered a death that is only befitting a criminal or a slave in the ancient Roman Empire. He suffered a death on the cross. And why did he do that? Well, he did become a slave for you and for me. We were once enslaved to sin. That's what Jesus and St. Paul tell us. We were once dead in our trespasses with only one place to go. Death and eternal separation from the triune God. But what did Jesus do? Well, like a slave, he took our shackles, the shackles of sin, he put them upon himself, and he went to the cross, and he died the death befitting those who are enslaved to sin. He even became subject to death. But that was not the end. What did St. Paul say? God the Father has raised him victorious. He's broken free from the grave. He's broken free from the shackles of death, from the shackles of sin. And with Christ, then, you have been raised up, a new creation. And Christ Jesus was seated above everything that exists, above all powers and authorities, rulers and dominions at the right hand of God. 
and with him you were also raised up so that your new life, your freedom from sin, your freedom from death is now hidden with him in heaven to be revealed on the final day. And on that day, all knees will bow, whether willingly or unwillingly, and confess that Jesus is Yahweh, the creator of the heavens and the earth. But our life really is hidden with him. Yes, we do live a new life. We are free from sin. Sin is no longer our master. And we no longer need to fear death because death has no final claim over us. We are reconciled to the God of life who will give us life. But we don't always see that. We, we Christians suffer like any other person in this world. Or that's the way it seems. Christians struggle with addiction. Christians experience same-sex attraction. Christians sin. Christians die of Alzheimer's. Christians get cancer. So when it comes to what we see, we don't see this new life right now fully revealed. But you can be certain that you do have new life in Christ Jesus. Why? Because the exalted Lord, the Lord of life, comes to you, once again, hidden. We do not see him, but he is certainly here, because he has promised to be so. He comes to you hidden. He has united you to himself in baptism, where you died with him, and where you will also be raised with him. That means that your entire life is a life lived in Jesus' dying and rising. As St. Paul says, to live is Christ, to die is gain. That means that when you suffer, you do not suffer like the world. You do not suffer alone. You suffer in and with Christ Jesus. And so St. Paul can even describe his own sufferings as filling up the sufferings that were lacking in Christ Jesus' death. And that means that when you die, you will not die alone. You will die in and with Christ Jesus. And that can only give you hope. Because if you suffer and die in and with Christ, you also will be raised in and with him. So, dear Christian, you have a new life. You are Lord of the universe, Lord of sin and death, because Christ Jesus has made himself your Lord. But what we are, we do not yet see. But when our Lord comes and we see him face to face, then we will see the new life. No more veil, no more shroud. Amen.
express our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. We pray for him and her daughter. We also pray that the Lord protect Joyce as she travels this upcoming week. And we also pray for the family of Lawrence, Guy's brother, that he would comfort them with the sure knowledge of life eternal. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Merciful Lord, you founded your Church upon the proclamation of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Through this proclamation, bring all to repentance and faith in Christ, that their sins may be washed away. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, encourage us by your Holy Spirit, that we may not lose heart. Make us to be of one mind and will, that we may serve you with gladness, doing the works of your kingdom here and throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, sustain all fathers, mothers, and children, husbands and wives, friends and neighbors, laborers and employers, and teachers and students. Enable us all to serve our neighbors in godly vocations, delighting in the Lord's loving kindness. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, all the might of man is nothing before you. Yet you have appointed earthly realms and rulers to punish evil and honor good. Give us faithful leaders who will serve honorably and well. Bless also those who serve in the armed forces to defend us and protect our liberty. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, grant the encouragement of Christ and the comfort of his love to those who suffer and grieve. Especially him and her daughter, and the family of Lawrence. In every affliction, prove yourself a ready and worthy Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, we ask that you would protect Joyce as she travels this upcoming week. May she arrive at her destination safely, that in this life she can continue to receive your gifts unto life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, Jesus possesses the name above all names. Before his name we bow our knees and confess him as true God. Give us true faith and reverence as we approach his altar to receive our Savior's glorious body and blood and these humble means of bread and wine for our salvation. Lord, in your mercy. All these things, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We exchange the peace of Christ with those around us.
Thank you, Lord, for all the good things that you have given us. Make our lives dedicated to you in response. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed good and right that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection has gained for us the way of everlasting life. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Christ Jesus. Send now your Holy Spirit into 
to our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, hear us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Walking on the road to Jerusalem, time to come to sacrifice again. My two small sons, they walk beside me on the road. The reason they came was to watch the land. Daddy, daddy. What will we see there? There's so much that we don't understand. Welcome to the Lord's table. So I told them of Moses, and Father given. Abraham. And I said, dear children, watch the land. There will be so many in Jerusalem today, we must be sure the land doesn't run away. I told them of Moses and Father Abraham, I said, dear children, watch the land. When we reach the city, I knew something must be wrong. There were no joyful worshipers, no joyful worship songs. I stood there with my children in the midst of angry men. And then I heard the crowd cry out, Crucify him, we tried to leave the city, but we could not get away. Forced to play in this drama, a part I May this, the did true not body and blood of our Lord play. and Savior Christ Jesus, keep you in the one true Why faith unto life everlasting. Day, Go in peace. Men condemned to die. Why were we standing here where soon they would pass by? I looked and I said, even now they come. The first one cried for mercy. People gave him none. 
The second one was violent. He was arrogant and loud. I still can hear his angry voice screaming at the crowd. Then someone said, there's Jesus. And I scarce believe my eyes. A man so badly beaten, he barely looked alive. Blood poured Welcome from to the his Lord's body, table. from the thorns upon his brow. This is the body of Christ given Running for you. down the cross, this is the body of Christ given and falling for you. to the ground. This is the body of Christ given for you. I watched him as he struggled. I watched him as he fell. The, body Christ given for the you. cross came down upon this his back, and the crowd began to yell. In that moment, I felt such agony. In that moment, I felt such loss. Till a Roman soldier grabbed my arm and screamed, You carry his cross. At first I tried to resist him. Then his hand reached for his sword. So I knelt and took the cross from my Lord. I placed it on my shoulder, started down the street. The blood that he'd been shedding was running down my cheek. They led us to Golgotha. They drove nail deep in his feet and hands. Yet upon the cross I heard him pray, Father, forgive them. Oh, never have I seen such love in any other eyes. May this, the true body, and to thy hands I commit my spirit. Keep you in the one true faith and life everlasting. And then he Go died. I stood for what seemed like years. I'd lost all sense of time until I felt two tiny hands holding tight to mine. My children stood there weeping. Welcome to the Lord's name. I heard the oldest say, Father, please forgive us. The lamb ran away. Daddy, what have we seen here? May this, the true body and blood of our Lord and There's Savior so Christ Jesus, keep you in the white truth faith. We don't understand. In so I took them in my arms, returned and faced the cross. I said, dear children, watch the land. Christ broken so that you may be whole. The 
true blood of Christ shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Please rise. Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life, and we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.